Hi everyone, Aiden here with the trailer. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Yakima Ridgeback hanging style bike rack on our 2023 Subaru Outback. With this being a hanging style rack, it's going to hold the bike by the frame with the rest of the bike hanging down below that. This bike rack has three points of contact. On top of the frame here, we've got two what Yakima calls zip strips. They basically just ratchet down in place over the frame into the cradles for a nice secure fit. And then a third one on the side here as our anti-sway cradle. That's gonna limit our side-to-side -side movement and bike-to-bike -bike contact. And compared to a lot of other hanging racks that use this stretchy rubber strap over the frame, these zip strips work a lot better at keeping that sway down to a minimum. You can see it doesn't completely eliminate it, but this movement is minimal compared to other options out there like the Kurt Premium. And with this being a hanging rack, we do wanna keep in mind some limitations. Carbon frame bikes are not gonna be good for this rack because any sort of frame contact there isn't recommended. Alternative frame bikes and kids bikes are gonna need a bike adapter bar to make sure that the bike hangs level or fits over this dual arm design at all. With those kids frames being a little bit smaller, the dual arm just typically doesn't work. And same thing for some alternative frame bikes, depending on how extreme it is. And then as far as weight capacity goes, this has a weight capacity of 40 pounds per bike. So be mindful of it when you're loading up and don't go over that weight capacity. If you have this loaded up in your hitch, you're probably thinking about access to the back of your vehicle. A lot of platform style bike racks tilt away with the bikes loaded, but with this being a hanging style, you can't do that. To get access, we have to unload the bike first. It will tilt away when we do, but we can't do it with bikes loaded. So get those zip strips removed on all three points. The one here on the side being a little bit tougher because we just don't have much room between our frame and the tire on our bike, but that's gonna be specific to you and your bike. Then once they're all removed, just lift it up and away. That inner cradle is going to be a little bit more difficult for some people to get to and lift their bike away from because the arms do sit a little bit high on the outback and it's kind of awkward to feed the bike frame over those arms depending on the size of your frame. And you'll notice that the zip strips don't sit anywhere. They just kind of hang freely. So be sure to pop them back on or keep them in your car if you don't want people to mess with them. Once those are all back in place, we can tilt the rack away. Now there's gonna be two levers, one on the top, one on the front. The gray one on top is for the arms and the black one out front is for the whole mast, this upright portion. So pull that black lever, fold the whole thing down and away, and then this gives us room to open up our back hatch. The fact that it uses levers and not pins and clips is really nice because it's straightforward and simple to use and you don't have to mess with things too much. And then we've got full room to get to the back here, maybe change our shoes before or after our ride, whatever we need to do. It's just kind of a pain that you have to do that with bikes unloaded. So if you're using this as a simple point A to point B type of bike rack, I think it'll be just fine because chances are when we get to our destination, we're already gonna be unloading it. And then lift it back up into position whenever you're done, keeping your hands clear of that lever because it will snap back and pinch you if you've got your hands too close. Now at this point, we can get some measurements. We'll start off with our distance added to the back. I'm gonna grab my tape measure here and go from the bumper to the outer point of the arms. Kind of lining this up. We're gonna be looking right about 39 inches. So for four bikes, that does stick out a fair bit, but in comparison to some other hanging racks, it's pretty much on par. And we can cut that distance down by using the gray lever up top. Again, keeping your fingers clear, it doesn't snap down as aggressively, but if you wanna leave this in the hitch between rides, this will save a lot of space. Only now sticking out 12 and a half inches to the outer point here from the bumper. Much easier to pull in your garage or your parking spot at work, wherever you go, just be mindful that there is still something back here, but it's gonna be a lot less intrusive. And with it back here, it probably will be blocking a bit of the back of the camera. But moving down to the hitch, you can see it's working with a two inch by two inch receiver tube, but by removing the sleeve, it will work with inch and a quarter as well. And then it comes with an anti-rattle device. It just uses a standard pin that pops in the side to kind of keep in the hitch pin hole. And the anti-rattle device is built into this hand knob on the outer edge. So it keeps it everything tool free. That hand knob can lock up for security. 
and it does do a very good job at keeping things solid. Now, if you're looking at this and thinking you maybe need more capacity, you can check out the five bike variation of this. That one's going to be pretty much the exact same, same weight capacities, things like that, but it just adds an extra cradle on the end of the arms and will stick out a little bit further when that's all said and done. But if you need that extra room, you can get it and you still get the same great features like the easy to use levers. But that'll do it for a look at the Yakima Ridgeback on our 2023 Subaru Outback. Thanks for watching. Here it is on our test course. We'll start by going through the slalom. This is going to show us the side to side action, which simulates turning corners or evasive maneuvers. Next, we're at the alternating speed bumps, which will see the twisting action. This will simulate hitting a curb or pothole or driving over uneven pavement. And finally, we have the full speed bumps, where we'll see the up and down action, which is just like driving out of a parking lot, garage, or driveway.